Welcome to special DVD commentary track of Whispers from Beyond. This, uh, you know, I, I feel really good sitting here right now watching this. Um, you know, watching John F. Kennedy deliver a speech about going to the moon and, um, you know, you know, and uh, mankind embarking on this, this journey you know, um, about a lifetime. I decided to make this movie. I decided to ba almost take it for myself, you know, my, my own idea, and uh, and make it to where it centers around two twin brothers on Earth, and it get, it'll end up tying into the astronaut thing. So really, you got two separate storylines because I knew that I couldn't film a movie up on the moon or, you know, make a nice set, you know, so I had to come up with a, a good idea. Uh, this is our first production day, and, uh, you know, I know in the documentary I I sounded irritated that Kalen was late, but really it was a gift, because if he hadn't been late, it would have been really nice and blue, blue skies and everything, because it was, it, was, it was nice when I woke up that morning about, you know, I left house about 6.30 in the morning. So I sat there and it was, you know, you could see the clouds to the uh, to the east coming in. And uh, I was a little nervous. I was, I was afraid he wasn't gonna show up. And uh, he finally did. And then all of a sudden we got this nice overcast look. And that's why it has this dark look. And I really like that. And then uh, we just finished shooting this scene and it started raining and in, in, in the screenplay I, I wrote that Chris comes up to this tunnel because it's raining you know he's trying to get out of the rain and he's also the reason why he's walking is because he had a fight with his brother and we never filmed that scene so that's why it's not in this this version you're seeing you know this is as close as that it, it can be with what I've what I shot so and you can see the rain really good there. Uh, very, very exciting. Very, very beautiful, beautiful shot. Um, I've, you know, I've never shot in the rain, and luckily, you know, I was filming inside the tunnel, so my camera wasn't getting wet and all that. And uh, and I waited for it to calm down before I went outside and shot a few shots. But uh, you know, I, I have to say that I, I, I really, I, Cameron did an awesome job. You know, this is a lot of repetition. You know, you, you know, this is all done with one camera. You got to play this scene several, several times, and uh, it's just a beautiful shot. Be beautiful, the, the lighting and everything. Uh, uh, I can ask for a better day this day. Um, you can see the water coming in there. Uh, we were. And then water started coming in through the through the uh, side uh, passageways they have there, and uh, and uh, actually the uh, the track you're listening is is just a, a rain track. I, I I bought it like Walmart, you know, and uh, I uh, I threw that in behind, you know, and it has a lot of the sounds that that we heard. The only thing it doesn't have is is the car car noises. You know, there's a lot of Boom, boom, you know, cars passing by up above, real bassy kind of a sound, and um, it was just, you know, it was just, it didn't work, you know, uh, it's too distracting, and plus there's a lot of times me and James are talking away, so I had to cut out all that, and this is a flashback uh, 10 years before, um, where Chris is thinking back on the days of when they went on a journey. Um, to, to find something special, to find basically another key, the thing that you see hanging on on uh, Ken's neck. Uh, they're trying to find another key, basically. So, and uh, uh, Al is trying to guide them. And uh, so, anyway, during that scene, we actually were, you know, there's actually supposed to be shots of of, of, of Ken dying. But we never filmed it, so it didn't make it in. 
So that's why I had to put uh, this. You know, this scene, this cave scene here that we're watching now, was actually going to be played in flashbacks um, the night before Chris and Michael start their journey. Uh, Michael has basically nightmares of, of this scene, and we weren't going to actually see any of this until until that that dream. And then later on in the movie, when they when Chris and Michael, the older Chris and Michael, finally reach the, the cave, then they'll have a complete flashback, and you'll see that it was Michael's fault for why they they didn't get the key. Their their first failure. So this is in a way their. Their, their, their first failure the failure of the mission um, and there's actually only only one one kid there uh, Jordan um, we had to do a, a lock off shot and uh, to, to be able to get the two of them in one shot and then, you know it's just the uh, the look of this day was was really nice too um, very, 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 very hot. Very hot day, no clouds in the sky, as you can tell. Um, and you can tell by, you know, Ken, he looks, looks like he's hot, so. <laughs> and there's something else I haven't mentioned yet uh, about this day, is uh, is we got, uh, we got ate up with, uh, 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 geez, I can't think, these little bugs. Um, you, you know, see us walking in the grass. These little, uh, these little bugs bit us up real bad on our, our ankles and stuff. And we had them for for weeks. You know, they, uh, they, uh, what they do. It sounds gross, but they they actually crawl into your skin and burrow in there. And they leave little sores and they itch like crazy. And uh, that was, yeah, that that came after though. We didn't realize that till we got home. But. Uh, So, and the, uh, the, the dialogue. I just know. You can hear the, you hear the wind blowing. And originally, this scene was, I envisioned it as, you know, being really, uh, just no dialogue and just visual. Um. It wasn't until we, me and James Anderson started talking about the scene that, you know, we thought, well, heck, let's throw in some dialogue just in case, you know. So I thought, okay, you know, we'll, we'll do that. Well, you know, the wind was just horrible, as you can tell. Um, and I said, man, I don't, I don't know if we, if we, I told James, I don't know if we should, you know. I don't know if we should, if we should get dialogue, do dialogue, because it's just, it's just awful. And, uh. He said, "I don't worry. You know, I got my own studio, and he, he did. He has, he had a awesome, awesome setup at his house, and uh, and I, if anyone could do it, I, I, I uh, knew James could. So uh, I said, you know, he said, you know, we'll be able to, you know, redub it in my studio. And I said, okay, let's go ahead and shoot it. Well, he ended up moving off, and uh, you know, everyone's busy." So I decided just to use what production audio we had this day. So uh, that's why it sounds like crap. Uh, here's another split split shot. Um, and actually, the key. We talk about the key. The key that's hanging around Ken's neck. And later, Chris will Chris will have that key is actually made. Uh, I work at. Uh, animation uh, and there's a there's these carts that we push around that we put media on and they're metal and uh, James came up with a, an awesome idea we, we couldn't figure out what we we're gonna use for the key and what he did is the, the leg the leg of, of one of the the stand the carts he just sawed off of it, thin slices of it and he took those home and painted them different colors and and actually, in the in the documentary, you'll you actually will see me uh, check him out for the first time. And I decided to go with with the brown look. Um, 
so that's how we come up with that. This cave actually goes in really, really far, and in the uh, you know in in the movie, uh, Chris, the older Chris, actually journeys really far into it, you know, and we were gonna spend just a whole day down in there, and uh, you know it, it would basically symbolize you know a lot of the inner demons he has you know when he goes through this cave he 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 fights all these feelings he's had stuck in here and michael goes on his own journey you know he's an alcoholic and uh and he's got his demons you know and uh it's just uh i think it's a good story um and this is some of the last few shots we did, and look at Ken, he is just burning up hot. <laughs> Jordan's hot. It was just awful. There's a split effect. You know, these last few shots really aren't, I don't know, I just don't really, they're not bad, but I feel like I could have done a little better. It's just we were getting hot, we were ready to get out of there, and at this point, you know, I think if I would have said, hey, guys, but, you know, you want to finish this up some other day? I think they would have been like, oh, yeah, let's go, you know. <laughs> but me, I wanted to go ahead and finish this because I didn't want to have to bring Ken and Jordan back out here again. You know, this was going to be it for them for this scene. They weren't going to have to come back here again. Uh, only me and uh, Kaylin and James would have to come back here again. So, you know, and I have to, I have to applaud Ken and Jordan. You know, they, they did really good. James did. So, uh, you know, thanks. I want to thank you guys for helping me out on that day. It was a tough day. Uh, and here's, uh, here's some of uh, uh, Kalen's big days. You know, this is uh, production day three. And is there, there's actually a few shots where I shot on production day one, then I kind of slipped into here. Well, I'll, I'll point it out in a minute. Uh, yeah, Kalen's, he's, he said, I, you know, how do you want me to drive? And I said, you're pissed. You're, you know, you're, you don't want to do this. He's like, okay. So, wham. Well, he just, this shot right here is from production day one. And then the rest of it's production day four. I think it blended in pretty good. Uh, there was another shot, you know, uh, when I was talking, there was another shot where the camera was low on the ground and the car zoomed by. That was that was production day one shot. Uh, so in front of us, right there, actually is, is where uh, Al, the uh, ghost, is standing. And uh, let's just turn it up for a minute. And it's a green screen shot. You can kind of tell. Less than five foot. How much further? I don't know. I can't remember. Kalen's doing good. Why don't you try to remember? I have to admit, though, that there's a split effect. I I have to admit, though, that out of all the the, the stuff I I uh, had to you know go through and cut all these pieces out of out of all the scenes this scene scared me the most because Kalen was trying to you know trying to find his character you know which it, it's tough I mean he's playing he's playing a dark guy he's playing a guy who's got a lot of demons you know a lot of pain and he's playing another guy that still has a lot of pain but yet has that dream that dream is still left alive in him and uh, you know it's just uh you know, and and see, before this, we, we missed a scene. We didn't film it, but uh, there's a scene where, before they come out here, where Chris or Michael gets upset with Mike with Chris. Michael gets upset. With, Michael gets upset with Chris, and says, "Hey, you know that was Dad's. So you know what are you doing with that?" And he goes to grab it, and then he looks over and he sees an image of Al real quick. You know, and, you know he. Uh, He's kind of in awe, but yet, you know, he's stubborn. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't trust what he's seeing. But, you know, he decides to follow his brother because he knows that uh, 
He doesn't want to, you know, deep down he doesn't want to go by himself, even though he doesn't want to do it. And uh, after this shot, okay, now this is the end of, that's all we shot for production day three. This is right here is production day four. Um, and we got a late start, which, you know, you watch the documentary, documentary you'll, you'll see why. Now, uh, in between those two shots, the railroad track shot and that other shot you saw, uh, there's going to be a, a railroad uh, walking scene where they're going to walk, walk around the railroad. We were going to try to find a bridge to shoot at, but, uh, uh, you know, we didn't end up shooting it. And really, I, I don't think we really need it anyway because it's we got a lot of material here of them just walking. Um, you know, when I first saw these woods here, I, I knew I... I knew I was, I felt like I was in, in the story. I knew I was in the right place. Um, when we showed up to the, to the other woods up by the river, you know, I, I, I didn't get that feeling, you know. You know, like the stream here, it just, it had the look I wanted, you know. And it was down in a gully uh, where the wind wasn't as bad as it, as it was up higher. I mean, just look at that shot. So anyway, before I get, you know, before, you know, this ends, I wanted to show you the screenplay. And this is what I, this is what the original screenplay, the cover looked like. Let's see here. This is what everyone got. And this is, uh, this is what I got everyone. Um, the screenplay, you know, what you're seeing is, is, is the tip of the iceberg. You know, I mean, good look at this. see I think 51 pages and 50 scenes um, let's see it says my I began writing on February 28 2006 and I ended on May 18 2006 so yeah and then after we shot a few production days I made this little cover for everyone and uh, just to get everyone excited and you know let everyone know that hey it's a lot of work but you know it's gonna look nice and uh, this is a Steadicam shot, you know, I made with the $14 Steadicam. I, I messed that up in the documentary. It's the $14 Steadicam, but it actually cost about $30. Um, uh, there's just so much to talk about, you know, it's just, it's hard to... Um, you actually had water in that uh, flask. I really like this. I like that. You know, out of focus. I like this scene. You're kind of in his head. You know, he's kind of in a. Uh, and then that gets slowly comes back into reality right here. Sound effects come back in. And uh, Kevin did a good job on this scene. I, I was a little, a little nervous about this scene too, but I think it turned out great. And coming up is a split shot. You'll see a quick split shot that I thought turned out great. Let's check that out. Yeah, right there. Isn't that that's awesome. And that's the only. It took us. That was the, that was that shot. Little bitty shot right there. That took most of our time. And that's all I used of it. But the lighting changed so much that I had to pick. I could only pick so much of of the shot, you know, because the rest of it you could tell right off it was an effect. But it's okay. I think it conveys, you know, hey, there's really two of them there. So, um, and I I just want to thank everyone. You know, it's about to end, and uh, I I think Kalen, good job. Uh, Awesome job. Um, and I just, uh, it was, it's, it's a great experience. And it, it, it got me so excited to, you know, put this on, put this on screen. And uh, stay tuned for uh, my next film called Black Mind. And I'll uh, see you then.